Now, what does that mean, feeling older? You know, that's kind of a nebulous term. And it's hard for us as scientists to start working on feeling older. So as we study this problem, it's first important to define the problem. Now, scientists, we have a number of terms for what's happening inside of our bodies during the aging process. Oftentimes, it's referred to as senescence. Now, that's a very confusing word, really only used by some of the academics. A more common term is vitality. And vitality is defined as three attributes. There's three components or dimensions of vitality that we as scientists study. The first is, of course, the physical aspects, right? Fatigue, your stress, your ability to have the motion that you need, that endurance. Second dimension of vitality is, of course, the mental aspects, right? Our ability to uh, remember things, to have that focus, that cognitive ability. And of course, the third dimension is very obvious as well, which is that sexual component of vitality. And in this regard, I'm speaking of the libido and that desire. All right? So as we study these three dimensions of vitality, that helps us to better define what we're addressing with this age lock science. But of course, the problem with vitality is that as soon as we hit 18, it is just all downhill from there, right? <laughs> and it's in all aspects, all three of those dimensions of vitality. And it's really because our body needs energy, right? And our body's ability to generate that energy inside, to generate the energy and to use that energy, it declines. We start to struggle as we age. And as we as our bodies struggle to generate and utilize that energy, it can rob us of that youthful vitality that we once had. Right, yes, an age-related vitality can be an ugly thing. Just ask anyone who's knocked on Scott's office door after 3 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> oh, my goodness, look at that. Well, Mark, I think, see the clock says 510? That's because I've been working all night. That's uh, just you guys yeah. showing up in the morning. Right. Now, the thing I've been studying is what? What is the molecular or the biological cause of this age-related vitality decline? What causes that within our bodies? And this is where it gets really interesting for someone like me who's a cell biologist. So, you know, of course, we're not just talking about a psychological event, this aging process and this loss of vitality, right? And we're not psychologists. We're actually going to have to look inside the body. And we're all created uh, of cells, right? Our, we consist of trillions of cells in our body. And as you look at the cell, then you can start to understand aging. But actually, the cell alone is not enough. You have to go inside the cell and look at cellular, subcellular particles. And here, I want to introduce to you our little friend, the mitochondria. Because it's the mitochondria that is able to convert oxygen and fuel into the, all of the energy that you need for all of the processes that Scott has talked about. Our mental processes, our physical and sexual. Every cell in the body is driven by energy that's created through the mitochondria. So these little mitochondria, and I think that most of you may have heard of the term mitochondria, right? Yeah? So I don't want to get too confusing, but there's just a small little compartment within the cell that creates the energy. And the energy that is produced by these, these cellular power plants is called ATP, right? And that ATP is used to drive all biological processes occurring in the cell. So, for example, let's pretend we're looking in a muscle cell, right? The muscle cell needs ATP for what? It needs it for motion, to move, right? To move our arms, legs, muscles. But now, if we're looking at a brain cell, that ATP is required for something else. That ATP is required for the cognitive function, to help our brains function properly. And same thing for all tissues throughout the body. So you can see how important ATP is to your body, right? It drives all biological functions. And the mitochondria produce it, but the problem is, as we get older, the number of mitochondria in each cell just drops. And the ability, their, their function, or ability to generate energy, it also drops as well. So the efficiency and the number in each cell drops like crazy. And of course, this has been tied clearly 
to this age-related vitality loss. So that's what you've been studying. Well, you know, we're in the 21st century and we have some amazing technology now. I want to show you something more exciting than just the textbook knowledge of mitochondria. Every cell in our body is teeming with these mitochondria. This isn't computer-generated design. This is an actual picture of a live cell where the mitochondria have been stained. Every cell has between 500 and 2,000 of these mitochondria. Just look at them, moving around in the cell. Their sole purpose is to generate the energy that you need for all of the functions that Scott just described. And you can see also a zone there where they don't go. Okay, it's a, it's a round, remember this is three dimensions, so that's actually the nucleus of the cell. It's forbidden to all other subcellular particles except a special part, and Scott will talk about that in a minute. So, if you look inside that nucleus, what's, we're, well, let me back up. As we look at the mitochondria, we're trying to understand why. Why is it that their functional ability and the number decline? To understand that, you need to understand what controls the mitochondria. And what controls the mitochondria is found in the center of the cell, that no man's land that Mark mentioned. And it's called the nucleus. So within the nucleus, you can see something called a chromosome. And those chromosomes, those contain the information that drives the cell. Now, if I spread out those chromosomes, you'll find that each of the genes are located within that, within that chromosome. Now, Mark, you have this fun little demonstration that right. helps better understand. So imagine this is your DNA. It's packed in the cell in these chromosomes, right? This is just the packing of the DNA. That's what you see right up there, Mark, chromosome. As that unwinds, then basically what you see is the strand of DNA. Along the DNA, it's divided into compartments or sections called genes. So I'm not sure if you can see here, but I have a red gene and a blue gene. Can you see that? Each of those genes is the pattern, the code, for a particular protein. So the green gene is going to encode for a certain protein. Maybe it's for the cell wall of the mitochondria. So it's producing these proteins that end up as building blocks for the mitochondria. The red gene there, it's going to be producing a different protein. Maybe it's for some of the machinery that produces ATP, the little turbines there. The thing that really is at the heart of age lock science, gene expression science, is understanding how the levels of gene expression change during the aging process. Because it turns out that as you age, perhaps some of the red protein is not produced in sufficient quantities. Perhaps some of the green protein is produced too much. And the idea is to try to adjust that gene expression profile. So as we study those genes, what we were trying to find is those genes that are important to the mitochondria during the aging process. Now in every cell of our bodies, oh, there are over 25,000 genes. And those genes change with age. It's a lot like a car. Let me give you a little yeah, example Let me give you an here. analogy to show you how the mitochondria will. Let's compare it to a car, just in case you're not getting the message yet about the importance. So the car will convert fuel, gasoline or diesel, and oxygen into power, right? If you have a young vehicle, one that's just driven off the lot, then it's actually going to produce that energy quite efficiently. It'll be quite powerful. It's not going to have pollution. It's going to produce sort of a clean exhaust. And so it's going to have really good fuel economy, right? Now, as the car gets older, if it's like mine, a 38-year-old Land Cruiser, it's not quite as efficient anymore. It starts to age. So it produces less power. And along with that, it's actually producing more emissions than the EPA would like. And so let's compare that then to the mitochondria. It's really the same story. Mitochondria converts fuel and oxygen to power, to energy. As they get old, they get less efficient at doing that. And to make matters worse, they're producing some toxic byproducts, which we know as free radicals, which actually accelerate the aging process further and further damage the, free, the actual mitochondria. So you can see this is an extremely important area to focus on in terms of our energy and vitality and our youth. And, well... What happens to your car when, you, when it gets too old? <laughs> How do you improve its performance? Oh, Mark, you know I'm not very good with cars. Um, I, I drive faster. No, that's not going to do it. No, what you want to do is sort of, sort of restore your car to a sort of more youthful state. 
you know, I did change the windshield wipers. Right, not going to do it. Anything else? Any other ideas, Scott? On how to perform, improve the performance of my car? Normally, I just turn up the radio so I don't hear all the creaks and crattles. Okay, so don't let Scott drive no, your car, okay? Well, that's...